What the f is going on with Canada? We need to talk about this. There were so many questions about how Canada would perform in their first World Cup match in nearly three and a half decades, and they answered a lot of those questions. An unbelievable performance, stats like leading the opening round of matches and expected goals, and doing everything but score a goal. Yes, that's the most important thing, but the side story and a big checkmark for the Canadians is that people are now talking about Le Rouge. Don't forget, Spain beat Costa Rica by seven goals to nil on the same day, and that's not what the media wanted to talk about. About, they wanted to talk about Canada. Performance aside, there was another reason why so many people were interested in Canada and particularly their coach John Herdman. We're gonna go and F Korea, Croatia. That's as, as simple as it gets. So here's the thing everybody, when you are a media member and you ask a coach a specific question, what did you tell your team in the change room? You're going to get sometimes an honest answer and will that ruffle some feathers? Yes, but if you're going to ask the question, you have to expect a little bit of honesty and hey, that is a man who is incredibly proud of this team, not just the performance, but the journey and to rise to the occasion on the international stage. Obviously, a quote like that from John Herdman is going to go super viral and yes, as well, when he was asked the next day, now that everyone had a bit of time to cool off and digest the result from the day before, John Herdman had to not necessarily walk it back the very next day when asked about it, but he was asked if it was perhaps a little bit disrespectful, and John Herdman said, Great question. Yeah, I did say that. You say those things in an impassioned moment trying to inspire your team in a huddle, and when you're asked the question what you said, yeah, it is what I said. It's not massively respectful to the Croatian people and the Croatian national team. I understand very well where they're at on the world stage. But in that moment, you've taken your men to that next place. You've taken that team to the next place. That we're here to be fearless and to bring everything we've got to that game. And we did that. I mean no disrespect to the Croatian team and Croatian people, but at the end of the day, it's a mindset that Canada's going to have if we're going to have three points against one of the top teams in the world. And it's the mindset that we took to Belgium. We have to. It's part of new Canada. We all have to remember that John Herdman has been at this for a very, very long time. Literal books have been written about the progression, the transition, and the development of this Canadian men's national team from obscurity into where they are right now, taking World Cup matches to the very end against heavy hitting sides. This is just who John Herdman is. He's not one of those former players who retired, picked up a whistle and a dry erase board and went to it. This is in his DNA. He is a man that that knows his tactics, knows how to motivate, and knows how to lead. So, when you get a bit of bulletin board material, that's what you would expect out of a team that had no expectations and the eyes of the world upon them. But on the other side of that double-edged sword, and yes, that is a sword reference for those who know, that's going to be bulletin board material for a team like Croatia, and we know Croatia pays attention to these kinds of things. So the question has to be asked, will John Herdman come to regret saying, we're going to go and F Croatia. This morning when we woke up and got ready for the first match of the day, some people might have been scrolling through Twitter, some people might have got a text message from a friend with a Photoshop picture of John Herdman naked. Yep, that is not probably how many of you expected to start your day, it's not what I expected to be talking about today, but here we are. The chaos truly kicked off when a Croatian reporter tweeted out a picture of the front page of 24 Sata in Zagreb, and it had the following to say based on this tweet, I don't pretend to know Croatian. You have the mouth, but do you have the balls as well, is what that translates to, and as you can see, there is a very big Canadian flag over John Herdman's mouth and a smaller maple leaf just down below. That's a shot that was fired. It's not just the Croatian team that heard it, it is the Croatian media, and they were ready to make this a story. Canada, for so long, we have been waiting for our men's national team to belong. Not just in CONCACAF, not just having success in Major League Soccer or the success stories of the Canadian Premier League, but truly belong with the best in the world. And when you get to that level, which Canada very much is now, you have to understand that football is just not about the 90 minutes that are played on the field. It is the industry that is around it. It is the talk from the supporters, the banter, the jokes, the cutting-edge journalism where every little interaction or quote can become a big deal. 
Canada, we're here now. This is our new reality. We didn't even have to wait very long into this tournament to be reminded of that. Cristiano Ronaldo is a fantastic example when the alleged rejected handshake that he had with Bruno Fernandes became a talking point for nearly 48 hours. This is what it means to be at the highest level. And this isn't a surprise either with coaches. Jose Mourinho made a career out of taking stories and taking attention away from his players when he wanted to direct the conversation in a slightly different lane than perhaps the obvious one, which is just why is your team not performing? Why are you losing matches? When you can create another piece of context around the game, that is often a sign of a good manager. So on the other side of this is Croatia. And we have to zoom out a little bit, not just this story, but remember that Croatia started their tournament with a bit of a whimper. They came in with a nil-nil draw, didn't look great. The world beaters, some had them as the group favorites. Remember, 2018 World Cup finalists. This is already an intense Croatian side with something to prove. And then John Herdman goes out and gives them a little bit more bulletin board material. Remember that Croatia pays attention, perhaps more than some. There are a lot of athletes, there are a lot of coaches that pretend like they don't go on social media or don't know what are in the newspapers. It's just background noise. We don't pay attention. That is not the case with Croatia, as was evident in the last World Cup when they defeated England in the semi-final. And Luka Modric and his coach were quick to point out that the English media got it wrong and that Croatia weren't expected to be here with quotes like this. English journalists, pundits from television, they underestimated Croatia tonight and that was a huge mistake. All these words from them, we take, we were reading, and we were saying, okay, today we will see who will be tired. And like I said, they should be more humble and respect more opponents. But we showed again that we were not tired. We dominated the game physically, mentally, in all aspects. We are in the final. It's the biggest success in Croatian history in sport, and we have to be proud. So without a doubt, Croatia paying attention. They know what John Herdman said. They already had a point to prove. And Canada, don't forget, they have to go out and get a result. They play great. That's fine. But they didn't get a point in that opening match. They need to pick up a result here. Will this bulletin board material actually have an effect? Add a little bit more pressure against Canada to step up and perform to back up their gaffer? We'll just have to wait and see. So nobody knows what was going through John Herdman's mind other than John Herdman, but it wouldn't surprise me if there was a piece of this that was intentional. We're not talking about Alfonso Davies missing a penalty less than 10 minutes into the match. Should Kyle Lahren have taken it? Should Kyle Lahren have started? Etc. 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 We're not talking about Jonathan David and the fact that he was fantastic but didn't finish. We're not talking about the fact that despite all the praise, despite all the good work that Canada had done, they still don't have any points to show for it, and now they have to go up against the World Cup finalists. So you have to think that maybe there was just a shred from John Herdman that said, let's redirect this conversation, and hey, it got him a Photoshop picture of him in a Zagreb newspaper wearing nothing but maple leaves, so I'd say it was successful. And that leads us to what is actually going to happen. It's the beautiful thing about sports. We have to watch to find out. But it's going to be a different game than Belgium, make no mistake about it. Canada is no longer a surprise. If anything, Croatia wants to dominate this upstart country and remind people who European powerhouses are and the fact that they are the ones that deserve to be dominating the conversation. This is an older Croatian team, similar to Belgium in that vein, but it is not the same as playing Belgium. It's a little bit more aggressive. The fluidity in midfield, especially the midfield and large chunks of that game, especially in the first half against Belgium, was non-existent. It was very wide. Luka Modric is going to demand attention, is going to demand to have the ball, and it's not just Luka. Make no mistake about it. You do not get to a World Cup final with just one player. This is an incredibly talented team with maybe a little bit more fuel to that fire. And you have to think, too, for Canada, now all of a sudden, that first match is gone that could help them but all of a sudden they're going to have deeper scouting reports they're going to know who's in form they're going to know what Canada looks like in this moment but now instead of having months to prepare for one opponent they have days these things matter these things are worthwhile in considering and talking about but ultimately it's going to come down to the result if Canada gets a draw you would think that's the minimum expectation now for this team if they get beat John Herdman's gonna have to go out there and eat a slice of humble pie as well the players but if Canada goes out and wins not only perhaps do we have a brand new rivalry Croatia and Canada who would have thought heading into this tournament but that victory pie is going to taste a whole lot sweeter